So Apple just unveiled something pretty exciting, especially for developers and tech enthusiasts who are constantly bumping into memory limits. I know I'm always bumping into my memory limit with 128 gigs of RAM. Not really though, unless you're running Adobe products. Typical software development scenarios are never going to even come close to 128 gigs of RAM. I shouldn't say never because you never know. But right now, Apple just dropped this thing, the M4 Max and the M3 Ultra Mac Studios. A little bit weird not to have the M4 Ultra. So now we have to choose between having the M3 Ultra that's going to have much higher multi-core performance and the M4 Max, which is going to have the higher single core performance. I don't like making that choice, but I guess we kind of have to. So yeah, this is not a small upgrade. Nvidia digits is something that's on the horizon with 128 gigs of memory. Wow, that seems that seems pretty high right now, doesn't it? Framework just announced their machine with 128 gigs of RAM. And of course, Apple themselves offer a MacBook Pro with 128 gigs of RAM. But no, that's not enough because the M3 Ultra comes with 512 gigabytes of memory, 512 gigabytes of unified memory. According to my LLM inference hardware calculator, we can run, let's see, I'm gonna switch this to unified memory, context length, we're gonna need to lower that a little bit, disable KV cache, and we're gonna bump this up to 512 gigs of system memory, and we can run a LLM model that's over 760 billion parameters. DeepSeek R1, for reference, is 671 billion parameters. Why can't I get that in there? There we go. And that's quantized to Q4, not Q2. Of course, I'll be doing these tests because I did order one. And at this point, I think Apple is just showing off how far they can stretch the definition of a desktop computer. Just imagine this. You're sitting there on your nice little Mac studio, pulling another late night coding session, waiting for your code to compile. And then you think, maybe I need to run a DeepSeek R1 right about now, just for fun on my local computer here. So I'm not exactly sure what Apple is doing here. Clearly normal people don't need this kind of thing. People that are gonna be running LLMs locally currently need this kind of thing. But it seems like more and more people are interested in doing just that. And this applies to a lot of different professions, but especially software developers who are already familiar with getting a little bit more dirty with their machines and especially running local LLMs to help you with code or whatever. So you don't have to pay exorbitant amount of money to running in the cloud or for privacy purposes. Now, this new Mac Studio bumps the CPU core count to 32 and 80 core GPU with 32 core neural engine. I think this is probably the first time the neural engine got a big bump too. All this comes at a nice little price. We're still under $10,000, folks, okay? So it's not expensive at all. 9,500 bucks for this configuration with only one terabyte of SSD but you get Thunderbolt 5 with it. So with Thunderbolt 5, as I've shown in my Thunderbolt 5 videos, you get pretty much the same speeds outside of your machine as you do inside of the machine. What do I mean by that? Well, Thunderbolt 5 can go up to 80 gigabyte per second. And that means if you hook up a Thunderbolt 5 capable external drive, like this one, for example, this is a two terabyte drive that costs, I think around 400 bucks. But here with Apple, if you wanna upgrade by one terabyte, you have to pay the 400 bucks. They also offer a four terabyte version of this. I'm not even sure how much that costs, but I'll link to it down below if I find a sale. Apple is gonna charge you a thousand dollars for that three terabyte upgrade. Yeah, it's a lot. But one thing this does do is go up to 16 terabyte of internal storage, and that's pretty insane for a total price of $14,000 for that full configuration. But 16 terabytes internally, that's pretty nice if you need it. A lot of people don't need it. But again, if you're gonna be running LLMs locally and if you wanna store a lot of different LLMs locally, you're gonna use that space pretty quickly. Two of these clustered together is gonna give you over a terabyte of memory. I don't know yet what you'll be able to run with that, but you might be able to increase that context length locally you might be able to enable that KV cache. Let's quantize that to Q8. And there you go. You need 939 gigabytes of VRAM and you can still do it on a cluster. Should I try it? What else makes the Ultra special over the Max? They did release the M4 Max in a Mac Studio 2 now, but that only goes up to 128 gigs of RAM. And the memory speed, while not anything to sneeze at, 546 gigabytes per second, the M3 Ultra goes over 800 gigabytes per second. So that memory bandwidth is 
much faster on this, enabling much faster inference for those LLMs. So this is a very expensive device with a lot of capabilities. Here they are side by side, M4 Max and M3 Ultra. You can see that we're doubling the number of CPU cores and doubling the number of GPU cores because they're using two dies fused together for the M3 Ultra. And there's the bandwidth listing right there. And they're doubling the neural engine. I think probably the M2 Ultra and the M1 Ultra also had 32 core neural engine. Correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. So obviously the other group of people that are going to take the most advantage of this video editors. So you're definitely going to be seeing quite a lot of video editing related content here on YouTube. But of course, don't miss any of the LLM related content. And I'm going to be hopefully getting that NVIDIA digits in as well, as well as the framework one. Oh my gosh, that's a lot of stuff this year. This is going to make my wallet very unhappy. So definitely stay tuned. I do wonder though, if their Mac Pro is also going to get this chip probably sometime later this year. Right now they're offering the M2 Ultra with it up to a 76 core GPU. So even their Mac Pro doesn't reach these kinds of levels as the Mac Studio now does. And it costs quite a bit more for the Mac Pro. What do you think, folks? Did you order one already? Yeah, you're missing out. Come on, you, you got to get one. Just kidding. Wait, wait for the reviews to come out. It's a beast of a machine, but do you really need it? Probably not, but it's fun to see what it's capable of. You know, there's also this little thing, the Mac Mini, which are really nice, capable development machines. And I did a video on that right over here. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Take care.